to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to
It is Mother's Day. Mom, special welcome to you here. I hope that you're honored. You're going to be blessed in this service today. Uh, maybe you're a son or a daughter here with your mom. Maybe you decided one of the gifts today is to be with her at church, and you're a guest here at Milestone. Well, you're welcome here. We're so glad you're here with us at Milestone. All of our guests that come in our doors, we love to just do two simple things. Send you some information we think you'll find helpful, and a gift we think you'll be excited to receive when you get it. And so the way we do that is we just kind of mail it to you, and so we need some information from you first. And so in the seat in front of you, you'll see a little white card that looks like this. At some point during the service, if you just take the time to fill it out, and then later on, towards the end of the service, we'll pass the offering containers, and then you can let this be your gift to us uh, today. But thank you again for being our guest uh, here at Milestone Church. All right, well, I've got one big announcement here for the ladies here, and that is that the official registration for Summer Splash 2018 opens up this weekend, and so you can sign up. Yeah! You ladies, you fill the place up. We're going to be overflow plus overflow probably this year, but it's going to be a lot of fun. We want to see you there, and so you can sign up uh, in the commons uh, after the service today. And we have a special guest speaker, Holly Wagner, this year, which you're going to love uh, to hear from her. Well, in a minute, we're going to hear from Pastor Jeff, and he's got a special Mother's Day message for all of you moms here, but also some real key takeaways for all of us as well. Uh, before he comes up, I want to give you two things here. One, I'm going to ask when in a moment that you scoot in uh, to your aisles to create space for those coming in. I'm uh, still looking for seats behind us. And then now, would you also turn around and find a few people you don't know and tell them you're glad to see them today at Milestone Church. say happy Mother's Day to all of the moms, all of the single moms, all of the grandmoms, grandmas, you know, grandmothers today, they're, they're actually believing that like grandma is out of date, so I, I, there's, there's like new names for grandma. Are y'all with me? Are y'all aware of this? I hear the, the discussions, you know, of, of grandmas picking new names, you know, lovey, lolly, Honey, what's wrong with grandma? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, we left that behind and we're moving forward into the future. But uh, we, we just want to celebrate as, as well those who want to be moms and really just the ladies in our lives that do so much. And I have some key takeaways as I've been praying for you. I want us to think about what every mom, I believe what every mom needs to know. And I'm going to give you some of those takeaways and I think a lot of the principles pertain to life and they affect all of us. And so um, I wanna give you some of those as well. I wanna welcome those watching online, welcome those watching in our video service, Making Room and Making Space, as well as our McKinney campus that are streaming with us. Would you guys join me in welcoming all them and celebrating all the moms. Let's give moms a great hand. Well, it's an exciting time. I want you to leave encouraged today, moms, because you guys do so much. I heard, though, about an overachiever mom, um, Elizabeth Buttle. She is kind of, she kind of takes the, the cake here. I mean, moms are amazing, but this, this lady had her first child. I think she has the largest gap. She had her first child at 19 in 1956, had her last child in 1997 at 61. Let's have a moment of silence for her. Come on, ladies. I mean, that's pretty, pretty out there, man. I was like, that's amazing. Um, and my wife and I, and she's a phenomenal mom. Uh, she, in fact, we, we had a child a little bit later, not that late, okay, but she was telling me about a little special mom's day the other day, and we're talking about moms in all different seasons, and so we have a seven-year-old, and she was at her first grade class, 
and, and there were all these moms sitting around. I said, honey, how'd it go? She said, well, I, I felt a little older. You know, these are all young moms in there, and they had a question about what your mom likes to drink. And then the other question was what your mom likes to wear and what, how old is your mom, you know? And so these, these, these little kids are sitting in there and the moms, you know, are there listening. And again, these are all, a lot of them young moms. And, and the kids were like, you know, my mom likes to drink water and my mom's like 19 and my mom wears princess dresses all day. Came around to our youngest and she said, my mom drinks Coke Zero and a lot of it. She's 40 something and she likes to wear yoga pants. <laughs> Come on, mom, y'all know. <laughs> get the truth out there, okay? <laughs> I'll tell you about my biggest Mother's Day fail, okay? Because we have a child born on Mother's Day, our son, our second born, 2001. I was pastoring and preaching just like I am now. I was in my 20s and so I preached the big Mother's Day message and. I'll give you the behind the scenes, pastoral, real life, okay? So we're sitting around after the Mother's Day meal. My wife's pregnant, and we had been to the doctor several times. We'd been to the hospital once. We'd had all these false labor moments, and my wife looks at me when I'm in like the preacher coma at like four in the afternoon. She's like, I think it's time. I put her in the car. I drove over to the hospital in the parking lot. Now guys, don't do this. This will put you in marriage therapy. This will put you in counseling if you do it. I'm not, I'm not recommending this. But as she was getting out, I looked at her and said, is this real or are you faking? <laughs> she got out and her water broke. She said, okay buddy, you think I'm faking now? Look at this, okay? But we had a baby on Mother's Day. And so I wanna ask if you have your Bibles to turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 15. While you're finding that, I want us to set the stage a little bit for why we celebrate a big day like this because it's more than just a big holiday and it's more than just a chance to buy some cards and some candy. The fact is the principle of honoring moms and the principle of honor in general is found in scripture. Ephesians 6, 2 says, honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on the earth. So on the backside of honor, by the way, to all of us, when you get this kid thing right, when you honor, if you can hit the target, there's a promise for you. And there's a promise God grants us. And so no matter what situation you find yourself in today, we want you to honor and we want you to be honored. But for moms, there's multiple seasons in this whole mom thing. And every season comes with some different challenges. And I have some things that I believe are gonna encourage you and are gonna help you and are gonna strengthen you. And we're gonna look at Romans 15 and we're gonna look at how to apply that. But I thought just to help us, you know, just so you kind of know that I know and God knows where you're living, I asked some moms at different seasons of this journey to share with us some of the things that they have going on and some of the challenges and struggles and joys that they have. So I want you to watch this with me as we look at some moms in different seasons of life. I'm a single mom. I have a six-year-old daughter named Kinsley. I think one of my biggest challenges is when it's, when it's bedtime and I know that's my time to really like hone in on the day and um, ask those questions and, and pray and read stories Sometimes I'm just really tired and it's been a long day. And so when you're that tired and, and there's no one else to kind of like pep you back up, it's like you really have to dig into that inner strength and just be like, okay, I know this is my role. I have to step outside of myself and, and do what I know is best for my child. There's a financial burden when you're a single mom raising a kid on your own with, with no financial income to help. If I feel like I do make the wrong decision, I kind of beat myself up about it. I think my biggest pressure and, and, and what I worry about the most is if she's gonna be safe. And so even if I go um, above and beyond, it's still not enough. I have to just accept it. But the control freak mom in me wants to fix everything and make everything better, um, but I can't. And sometimes that, that wears down and, and I'm not always that leader like I should be. I'm a working mom, full time. Most of my days in the office are filled with 
back-to-back -back meetings, a lot of conversation, a lot of weight. I think the hardest part of going home is the transition. Two little kids with a lot of needs. So going from working to walking in a home, it's just a role change of going from that dominant personality or role and put on mom hat 100% and wife hat 100%. The biggest pressure is being away from the kids. That's a big weight that moms carry is just almost a guilt of someone else is doing what you might feel you should be doing. It's easy to look at that and think, okay, like am I not providing something that I should be? Or am I not measuring up to what a mom should look like? Me being the healthiest version of me at home is more of a win than me doing something I'm not called to do. A lot of it's just through modeling. We're trying to look forward to when she's a teenager. It's really just setting stuff up now that will translate as she gets older. We're flying a lot of this blind outside of virtual family and mentors, but we're learning that it's a learn as you go. I mean, at the end of the day, our biggest prayer and hope for them is that, that they would learn to hear God's voice. They would both come to know Jesus at a young age. I'm 61 years old an empty nester, just retired from school teaching. So I love being a cheerleader, I love encouraging, I love being surrounded with kids. Um, I find my role very different than what it was when my children were all gathered around me. Our son, all of his friends met at our house. We were the meeting house. I baked cookies. I mean, sometimes I baked cookies once a day. Your world was revolved around your children and their activities. And it was hard because the house was empty. We missed our children desperately. When you're an empty nester, you want to hold on to all of those memories. I think I've learned that more than anything whether we did it right or we did it wrong, you're forced to trust God and you have to find your value and your significance in who you are in Christ and not the fact that you spent all these years raising your children. I feel like we've let go. I mean, you know, we have and then we haven't. You think you're letting your children go and then you take them back. Really what your role is now is to pray and be a consultant when asked. I'm a mother of two teenage boys. The role being a mom and knowing that you're responsible for this life, I have to figure out, seems like day by day, that's probably the biggest prayer that I have is, Lord, can you protect me from myself so that I don't go and wreck what you're trying to do in their hearts and get in the way. I get frustrated and take it personal because I don't know how to help them when they are struggling. I don't have the words to say always in that moment. You have to be very patient. That's hard to do because it's always been about you being a good mom to them and you can just struggle with what does good even look like. I definitely do feel the pressure that if I don't fix it, that they're gonna go somewhere else and try to fix it. I definitely struggle with wanting it to appear like I do have the answers because I'm their mom and I'm so thankful they came to me when I'm like, why are you coming to me with this? I have no idea what to do, I don't know. Did I say the right thing? Did I, did I look at them weird when I was talking to them? I, I, I'm guessing sometimes when I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm very hard on myself and I think most moms are because we care so much that it's almost too much. I think you can be thankful and still completely struggle and fall apart some days and you just have to be okay with that. You want what's best for them, but you don't know what best is. To compete with what they're being influenced with and who their friends are and then wanting advice, just the constant struggle of going, I don't know, you know? And I think being able to say, I don't know is, is okay. I know they're gonna do incredible things for God. I know I just don't deserve them. They're just gifts and they're incredible and they're just precious to love them and to see them every day. It's a huge blessing. I can't even grasp it. I've told my boys, the good thing is, is that you don't have to be the strongest person in the world. You don't have to be 
um, anybody that you're not. And you have a mom who is a mess, and we all are. But I'm your mom. I'm meant to steward your heart back to him. And sometimes that's not gonna be easy, but that's my job and I'm gonna do it. you to join me in saying thank you to these ladies for their transparency and their vulnerability to really vocalize some normal feelings that all moms have. I want you to receive encouragement this Mother's Day, but we have to start a little bit by identifying some of the things that are going on. Moms are Moms are just amazing. Moms are make it happen people. That's just all there is to it. Let one of their kids end up with some type of physical issue or a health problem. Mom's gonna find answers. By the time mom shows up to the doctor, he or she better have their stuff in shape because mom's already researched it. Mom knows what's up, okay? Let one of their kids end up with some type of learning deficiency or some type of challenge and mom's gonna find out all there is to know about that challenge and see to it that their kid is best positioned to be able to face life with that challenge along the way. Moms are just made that way. Moms, when they find out their child is having friendship issues and they're having struggles and challenges with friends or relationships or they in any way feel like maybe their kid is not gonna be able to flourish because of these relationships, then moms are, are concerned. Many times mom is only as happy as the least happy child that they have because she's concerned about them and she's concerned about their future. And so all of that builds so much expectation and it builds so much responsibility. That's what we see coming out of these stories. And I know you live there as well for all of you moms. One thing I've learned in many years of pastoring too is that many times mom is trying to be mom and all that goes with being the superhero of the house. You know, mom has her own issues. Mom has her mom issues. Mom has the things she hasn't really dealt with with what she felt like she didn't receive in certain areas. And then there's all of the fast-paced requirements of being a mom, so the question is, when you're so responsible to give so much, as I prayed for you, I had a verse and I had a few thoughts in Romans 15, you're, you're so responsible to contribute so much, where do you go when you're struggling? Because what I find is all of the struggles start to build up in mom and she's got the things from her past and she's got the new season and she's got all the emotion and as my wife said, as we talked together a couple of weeks ago, and she's a fantastic mom, it kind of becomes like that steaming pot on the stove or like a volcano waiting to erupt. So where does mom go when all of that's boiling up inside? I think this verse of scripture, by the way, moms, you should take it, maybe put it on your phone, maybe put it on the dash of your car, or maybe on the mirror as you wake up every day and you look in that mirror and there's all those requirements for you what is your source? Where do you go when so many people need so much from you? A powerful verse here in the book of Romans. The Apostle Paul, this is an exhaustive letter to the church. It tells us about Jesus, the early chapters. It tells us how Jesus relates to us and our condition regarding Jesus and that while we were sinners, he died for us and he met us at our point of need. And then in the middle of the book, it transitions to how we begin to participate, and the latter part of these chapters are all relational. They're relational chapters of how we function with one another. By the way, one of the things mom always wants is for everybody to be happy and get along and the relationships to work. Well, this passage of scripture tells us really the source for all of that. I pray, Paul saying, that God the source of hope will fill you completely, look at that, completely with joy and peace. How many moms could use some joy and some peace? It says here, there's a source in God of hope that will completely, not partially, completely fill you with joy and peace because you trust in him. 
Now look at this area of contribution because you know how to go to this other source that most people never tap into. You know how to go to God. You know how to get it from him. It says this, now you will overflow with confident hope. The thing you're concerned about, you're overflowing with a confidence and a hope that doesn't come from you, that doesn't come from your ability, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, he begins to flow through you. So I had a thought for you this Mother's Day. I want you to leave encouraged, and that's this. When I look at that verse of scripture, here's something that I think every mom should know. That in fact, as a mother, your greatest contributions, your greatest struggles take place because of your great contributions. These great struggles in your life are there because they come in the areas of your greatest contribution. Or you might say it this way, the enemy wants to wound you, the enemy wants to inhibit you, the enemy wants to frustrate you, the enemy wants to discourage you in the areas that God wants to use you. So a lot of times in the areas where you're having these struggles are really a very intentional strategy of the enemy. The Bible actually says that we can understand what he's up to. I want us to think about that. Uh, we can understand, hey, what's at work here? What's taking place here? And I'm not saying that, again, you still have to go to this source to get help, but even understanding it sometimes can help you with a lot of the emotion and the struggle of it, and that's this, that we can understand. He can't outwit us, according to the Bible, because we're not unaware of his strategy. We're not unaware of the enemy's strategy. He wants to discourage you and create struggles in the area of your great contributions, and moms make great contributions. So I wanna break that down three areas that I want every mom to understand this source that's available, this power of the Holy Spirit that's available, the area in which it can come into your life, okay? Now moms, I want, I want you to do this with me for a second, okay? I need you to think a little holistically for a minute. Let's back up from the problem, let's back up from the emotion, let's back up. Moms are so good and they know how to segment things and work things and figure out things and, and I mean, they can multitask things, okay? I, I need you to get out of the weeds for a minute. I sat and had lunch the other day with my daughter, the youngest. I went and uh, had lunch with her, uh, took her pancakes, as she calls them, from McDonald's. Um, I don't know if that's on the approved eating list, but Fun Dad brings those for lunch uh, anyway. So we, I stopped at McDonald's and got pancakes, and then we sit at the table. You can sit at the friend table if you get to have your parents there. So we sat at the friend table, and the friend that she had with her, um, her mom, I'm gonna tell you, she, she's powerful. I don't know her, but I saw this little girl. She starts pulling her lunch out. She had specialized containers for every single food. She had the perfect wipes. This was the most organized lunch I have ever seen in my entire life. She pulled her sandwich out. The crust was cut off of it perfectly. My mom never cut the crust for me. I guess I was cheated as a kid. She's like, eat it, boy. Uh, and it was quadranted, it was, it was in four quadrants, and it, and it had a little impression of a heart on each quadrant of the pimento cheese sandwich. Now, now, she didn't eat it, Mom, you don't wanna know that. She said, I don't like it because I don't like cheese, but you, anyway, it was pretty, it was pretty. It, she, didn't, she didn't eat it, but um, anyway, so it was, it was just quite amazing. You know, we had like, like goulash, you know, or whatever, let's just mix it all up, but hers was nightly or nicely organized. Okay, so for a minute, moms, let's not think about the particular issue, let's think holistically for a second so that we can get some hope and encouragement at, as to what maybe is really going on. What's really going on? I want you to look at it with me, three areas that I think are important. Number one, moms provide safety. Moms provide safety so she has to know where to turn when she's afraid or anxious or worried. See, see, mom is the one that makes us feel safe. When the boogeyman gets under your bed, you gotta go to your mom, you know what I'm saying? When you skin your knee, you're looking for mom. Dad's like, get over it, mom, come here. Mom's on the scene, right? From the early age, mom, and I know moms come in different personality types and sometimes mom's a get over it person or whatever, it doesn't matter. In your early days of life, mom's your nurturer. 
She's the one you're close to. And there's something about when mom says it's gonna be okay, you feel safe. So if you have the ability, moms, to make us feel safe, why would the enemy not continue to plague you with worry, anxiety, and fear? He would, because the more afraid you are, the less you can offer to us the things that you contribute so well. And so in your life, mom, I wanna encourage you with this because there's gonna come the fear and the scenarios and what about this and what about that? And I wanna say to some of you young moms, after being a little further down the road, and so the thing comes up or a situation comes up and it's not like you planned it, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Every single challenge in your child's life, God's using that to form them into who God's called them to be. He doesn't create cookie cutter kids. He doesn't put quadrant sandwiches out when he does kids. They all come different. They all come there with their own personalities and challenges. But what happens to you is because it's not like you expected, there's all this fear and what about that? And you play out the scenario and, and, and even if they're having friend struggles, guess what? Sometimes God will even use that in their life to bring a full expression of their gifting. The valedictorian, we just had the graduation for my daughter, the valedictorian, Madison. She goes to church here and I was listening to her speech and she was talking about overcoming friend things. And I remember when she would carpool with us some and I remember her finding her way and I was just watching this beautiful example of a senior in high school who was the valedictorian of her class talking about all these different things and how God helped her find her way. Let me tell you, moms, if you'll just keep leaning into what you need to offer safety, God will work out the purpose and the destiny of that child. He'll work it out. You say, where do I get it? Well, Proverbs 18.10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runs into it and they are safe. So when mom knows how to run to Jesus, I'm gonna tell you, great moms are not those that meet the standard of the online super blog mom with everything figured out. Great moms are the ones who know how to go to Jesus, the strong tower. They know how to go there and feel safe under his covering because they offer safety to us. Here's the second thing moms are huge at. You guys, you, you, you do this in a way nobody else can. Moms, they affirm and nurture, so she has to learn how to deal with her own insecurities. So moms offer to us so much affirmation. They offer to us in a way that no one else can. When everything's against us, when we've had a terrible game or a terrible report, or we don't feel that great about ourselves, when mom says we're great, we feel great. When mom offers that affirmation to us, it goes deep into our souls. So if mom has the ability to affirm us like no other, then why would the enemy not continue to attack her to feel like she doesn't meet the expectations? It's the enemy's strategy, but we're on to him. We understand what he's up to. We know what he's trying to do here. And so moms, I'm encouraging you. You, you, can, you can move past what he's really trying to do in your own life. Did you hear the moms on this, in, on this video where they were sharing with us in different seasons? The level of expectation, the level that was, they were required to. And a lot of times the expectation they're putting on themselves that they feel like they're not meeting. My mom wrote me a letter recently. We're kind of in a little bit of graduation mode. We got one graduating, another one graduating next year. Of course, we have our Lauren Elizabeth, our junior high student, but we're kind of in this sort of reminiscent kind of kumbaya cry moment. Come on, everybody, y'all know what I'm saying. We, it's like graduation's like a month long now. Used to, they just, you know, we got like a cake and some peanuts and hey, get on out of here. But anyway, um, but I had a letter from my mom when she wrote me after they dropped me off at college and I read it recently, it's just all the, the way she was encouraging me and I, I started thinking, well, what about what she was going through? But she was offering affirmation to me. Think about how much you offer moms and when you look in the mirror and you feel a little insecure about your appearance or your ability or how you may not have met this standard or you didn't do it as well as this mom, know this, that's the enemy strategy to stop you from a great contribution. By the way, this is a principle for all of our lives. If you're wondering if someone needs some affirmation, they do. If you're wondering if they need some encouragement, they do. Moms do it so well, though. 
You say, where do I get my affirmation? Romans 8, 16 says, his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. So the spirit of God, you can go to the spirit of God, it joins with your spirit to bring affirmation into your soul at the deepest level so that you actually have it to offer. Here, here's the final thing I wanna encourage you moms with, it's so powerful, and that is moms transfer spirituality. And I don't wanna say spirituality like it's some nebulous thing or some new age thing or whatever. What I really mean is moms, moms do this. There, there's, a, there's a worship God with your mind kind of thing and the Bible's okay with that and, and there's a thinking side to this thing of faith and that's powerful and not that moms are not thinkers and that moms are not smart, but let me tell you, moms also help us experience God that they help us experientially as they're experiencing God, there's something about the way they experience God, it transfers to us. So moms, when we're very beginning phases of life, her nutrients become our nutrients and she transfers so much to us and so it is with spiritual things and I can show you this from the Bible. Moms transfer to us spiritual things so she has to, here's where your trap is, moms, she has to look past performance and keep thinking about the heart. Because you can get so caught up in the organization of lunch or the different pictures or the different performances or the different classes or the different tasks. I just wanna, I wanna encourage you with this. One area you do so well and you help us so much in is you help us not just know about God, you help us experience God. So don't get so trapped in the performance of everything that you lose that contribution because you give it to us so well. And the Bible's full of examples where moms had a way of transferring spiritual things. And thank God for the men. Thank God for the men that are getting saved in this church. The Bible shows that when a man is saved, then his whole household is saved. There's power there. But there's also a real power when you look at people in, in the Bible like Timothy and others where there were these influential moms. How many of y'all are thankful for the moms and grandmas that prayed us into the kingdom of God? Thank God for them, amen? So I know, I know they don't, they, don't, they don't show you, we don't show you, but when you introduce us to spiritual things, when you pray for us, when you do that, something's happening inside of us. I know that it doesn't look like that, especially in the teenage years. My mom, she's an awesome mom. She was that, she'd come wake us up, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. <laughs> Testosterone hits a young man, it's like, we'll have less of that. <laughs> but she just transferred to me. I have a spirit of faith today that I believe God can do the impossible that I learned. My mom transferred that to me. She just believed Jesus. He just answered her prayers. She would never feel the car. Three distinct times where we, we, we were running out of gas because she wouldn't fill the gas tank up, but she just believed Jesus would make gas appear. So we would drive and we're just kind of, oh no, we're out of gas. She says, that's fine, Jesus will fill it. I'm in the back seat going, maybe we should fill it. I don't know. <laughs> Put it in, you know, we don't need it. I just call out to Jesus right now. He'll fill the tank. And we, he, he did. I don't know. We get coast into the thing. I told you, and I know what you did Friday night, too. I mean, you know. God just talks to moms, God just answers mom's prayers. That's just the way it is. So let's not let him inhibit us with so much to do that you lose your time with God. We need you to be with God. We need you to experience new things with God because you trans, whatever you get, you give it to us. You give it to us and it's an incredible contribution. By the way, some of you are here with your moms or you're gonna be with your mom today or you're worshiping right now. Let me tell you what your mom's prayer for you is. The ones here that know Jesus Christ and have been praying for you, they want your life to flourish, they want your children to flourish, they want your marriage to flourish, and they know this, if they could finish the spiritual work in you, trust me, moms are beasts, they get stuff done. They would do it for you. They would do it for you. Sometimes to our own detriment, they do stuff for us. But they know this, 
the work that Jesus is doing in you, they can't finish. See, there's an incomplete work on the inside of us, no matter how spiritual or unspiritual your mom is. We all have a deficit on the inside of us that separates us from God called sin. And Jesus came and he said, you know what? Mom can't finish it. You can't finish it. You can't do enough good stuff to make your life work out right or to get right with God. So Jesus hung on a cross and made a payment for us and he said, it is finished. I finished it for you. And you wanna know the real truth? You know what your mom wants more than a flower or a card? She wants you to connect with that Jesus. She wants you to be right with that Jesus. She wants you to love that Jesus. She wants, because ultimately she knows that if you'll stay in step with him, he'll guide your paths and make them straight. So that's her prayer for you today. You wanna give her the best gift you could give? Quit running from Jesus and surrender yourself to him in a complete way because that would be the greatest answer to prayer that you could ever, ever give her. So you say, yeah, that's a great place to clap because I know moms believe that. That's what moms believe. So moms, be encouraged today. I know it's not easy and you have a lot of responsibility. But let's make sure we don't get deceived or distracted by all of these surface level things and miss the real contribution that you make. Because the enemy wants to distract you, he wants to discourage you, he wants to hinder you, and he wants to create struggles in the places you contribute the most. So be encouraged today. We know what he's up to, and we know how to go to the source, the confident source of hope that we can go to. I wanna do this at this moment, and I'm gonna ask moms that are maybe watching by video or here in the room, I'm gonna ask you just to stand with me. I wanna pray with you. Well, if you're a mom, would you just stand? Grandmas, moms, single moms, all of you, I want you to stand. And I just wanna pray for you. I want you to leave here with encouragement, with, with that confident hope that's promised to us in Romans 15, 13. I'm gonna ask you just to bow your heads with me and I wanna pray over you. And I, I know you got maybe even some plans for the rest of the day, and I know you maybe have a child on your heart. I know you, you, you always have a lot. You got a lot in your calendar. Can, can you do me a favor for a minute, moms, and let's just, let's just put that to the side for a minute? And, and I just want you just to, just to just take a deep breath for a second. And just in this moment, you're not always good at it, because you're such a giver, I want you to receive for a minute. Just receive from God today. Father, I pray for moms right now. We thank you for them. A lot of times we recognize them, but deep down there's not really anything we can do to really show them that they are appreciated. There's not enough cards or enough cake or enough brunches to let them know how appreciated they are. So, Lord, would you do what we cannot do by the power of your spirit and the promise from your word to grant them the overflow of this joy and this peace and encouragement? Would you touch them at the deepest level maybe of their discouragement or the challenge that they're facing, that thing they're worried about maybe in their own life or in their child's life? Would you let them walk away from this moment, Lord, with such a grace, a grace that overcomes any struggle or hindrance or thing that they're facing today. One word from you, one encouragement from you, is far beyond anything we can possibly imagine. So Lord, we thank you today, we honor them, we thank you for the role they play, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, one more time, let's celebrate all of you moms. We appreciate you, I'm gonna ask if you would, to have a seat, I'm gonna ask our ushers to come forward. We're gonna receive our tithes and offerings at this time. Thank you for your generosity. Makes it possible for us uh, to continue to reach people and build lives. This would be the time to give us that communication card too. If you're our guest, we're so glad that you're here. We hope you'll come back and join us and worship with us. Give us that card, we'd love the opportunity to serve you. Happy Mother's Day, God bless.
invite our prayer team, if you would, please make your way uh, down in front here. If your heart's heavy with something today, maybe the best thing you can do before you leave is come down and pray with somebody. We've had a lot of people coming down for prayer uh, this weekend. Before you go, one last time, mothers, happy Mother's Day. Uh, we love you, and we'll see everybody back again next week. Have a great afternoon.